It's how they figured out how to get everybody out of the convention center on time. The last announcement's a secret. Right. <laughs> and it's just Chris Roberts comes up and stands up and goes, all right, everybody, it's been a great convention. What I want you all to know is that uh, Evocati for 4.0 dropped six seconds ago. Uh, <laughs> so the faster you get out of here, right. the faster you could go play. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, everybody. <laughs> Con cleaned up in record time. Yep. No 4.0 until all the trash is picked up off the floor. Cue the Benny Hill music, right? <laughs> <laughs> It's cleaner than when they got here. How did that work? You're listening to Hangar 8, the MedRunner podcast about Star Citizen. MedRunner is a community organization that provides in-game medical and rescue services through our emergency portal at medrunner.space. On today's episode, Twitch streamer and notorious mustache twirler Bog Nagus drops by to talk about his experience creating content and communities in Star Citizen. And with CitizenCon on the horizon, there's lots to look forward to as we discuss our hopes for this year's announcements. This is Hangar 8. I'm Virus 8. And I'm Griffin. On today's episode, we have a guest in our virtual recording studio with us. Please welcome Bog Nagus to the show. Hey, thank you very much for having me. Great to uh, be part of this. I'm so glad we were able to find some time to sit down with you. Do you want to give our listeners sort of the elevator pitch, a quick introduction to who you are and uh, what you do? Sure. Yeah, I'm Chris Bog, Bog Nagus, uh, on, on Twitch mainly, and doing Star Citizen for a number of years, Elite before that, mainly space games. I've tried some other stuff, but I always come back to space games every time but uh really been looking forward to uh jumping on here and and thankfully i've gotten a chance to see you guys out in the field it's been really really cool so i'm glad to be a part of this i'd actually like to tag on to one of the things that you have already said which is you know you say you come back to space games a lot can you tell me a little bit about you said elite dangerous were there any other space games that you've loved and that brought you here to star citizen i started initially on nintendo 64 <laughs> With Rogue Squadron and and Pod Racer, and then uh, the computer that we had at home really wasn't that great, but it was able to run like X Wing and Tie Fighter, X Wing vs Tie Fighter, X Wing Alliance, and then I think the next one that I moved on to after that was Freelancer. Freelancer was kind of that like gateway drug with a great storyline. Ironically, Chris Roberts started the whole thing with that too, and then I did. Elite Dangerous and No Man's Sky, Dual Universe, Starbase, and playing Quanga lately and X4, so a whole bunch of different games. But I think Elite, ironically, was had the most amount of time that I put into it, which is about 5,000 hours across three accounts. And I we just recently did the calculation, and I think Star Citizen has apparently surpassed that <laughs> recently. Wow, that's a lot of time. Um, formerly Dangerous guy myself, I was a fuel rat for a while, uh, had, had a good time with that. So you said you've put over 5,000 hours into Star Citizen, but when did you join the long and uh, story development of this game? It's a perfect way to describe it. Uh, it was, I think, August of 2013. So um, I think around then I had been researching space games to play and um, Elite Dangerous and Star Citizen came up along the kind of genres and what I've wanted to play as a you know for a space game so i got a, a game package i got the aurora back in 2013 and i played it like a little bit but i had no idea what i was doing i think it was like port Alisar was the only thing out there and some combat missions against ai i think i went out for like 45 minutes an hour with like 10 15 fps maybe and so i was like all right well i i can't play this so I switched over to Elite and then ended up coming back to SC back in 2019 with thankfully a much better PC that could actually play it. I mean, you laugh at how much that's changed, right? Mm -hmm. As someone who kickstarted and I joke that I had the Omega, right? Came with a graphics card that is no longer able to run this game. It, it, right? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Every time I have an Omega as well, every time I take it out, I uh, it kind of reminds me of, of back then, like I barely had it running on, I can't even remember which GPU it was, but same same thing. So you are a space game guy, you play so many space games. What's the thing about Star Citizen that brings you back to Star Citizen? What is it doing that feels different from all the other space games you're playing and enjoying? Well, um, I think we're all 
masochist so you know we don't get as good a pain you know <laughs> it just really gives that you know no um it's interesting because each time I, I hop on either doing stuff for, you know, getting cash for the org or just, you know, getting some progression for reputation for the main character, I can do any number of different types of missions or just hang out at a station and walk around. I, I'm not going to say how many times, but it, it's probably like an embarrassing amount of times that I just go to Area 18, scroll wheel down and just kind of like walk slowly around because I just I love the environment and, and the fact that... um we can do so many different types of things. And I know that's a general statement, but in comparison to other space games, you know, Elite now having the ability to go out on foot, it's there, but it's not, even though it's released, it, to me, it still isn't a fully fleshed out type of experience that you would get on, you know, a ship. You know, for instance, just last week, we had a crime stat, a couple of us are on a hammerhead, and uh, we had gotten missiled. So the ship was in, you know, dire straits, took off, overheated ship shut down so got out of the the pilot seat you know ran up the elevator got the front doors open then we get soft death gravity takes over i fall through the the front of the ship and land on the ground as the ship drops behind me like experiences like that i don't think i've ever had in any other type of space game whether it be you know single player or mm -hmm mostly multiplayer but uh it it's just every time i come back to it i feel like it's a different experience yeah there are days where i am just frustrated and nothing feels like it's working and i liken it to summoning a mountain sometimes with some of the tech debt that's out there it feels like you're literally just you know one foothold after the other and it's slipping but i always say that i get way more amount of good experiences out of this than i do bad and the uh the number and spectrum of different type of experiences that I get with this has been different from any of the other space games that I've played. Star Citizen gets a lot of flack for, oh, it's been an alpha forever. It's not a finished game yet. But the variety of experiences, even if maybe the density of experiences isn't present, there is a much wider variety than you can get in other games. I also am a former Elite Dangerous player. And yeah, it's a finished game, but there is so much more you can just do in Star Citizen, even in a very unfinished state. What is the most enjoyable gameplay loop for you? What is the thing that when you sit down either to stream or play off stream gives you the most enjoyment? Crime. I absolutely love crime. <laughs> <laughs> it's the secret ingredient. It's crime. Yeah, right? <laughs> um, it's funny. We have a, uh, a, a Twitch command where um, somebody does exclamation crime and it's uh, what's his face from? Oh, I can't think of it. Uh, Firefly. Uh, he, he asks Kaylee, like, what are we doing today? And she says, oh, crime. And, and he, oh, crime. Gotcha. <laughs> no, but um, a lot of us love running around with crime stat fives. And even though recently, very uh, much more recently, the Bounty Hunter system has been a little bit finicky with showing markers and stuff. I feel like it's the most fun and it's the most adrenaline that you can get because the party's literally always coming to you every time because somebody's looking for your bounty, whether they be in a single ship, a duel, a big ship, coming in a group. It's it's so much fun. And so we have a code that, that we go by where we don't shoot first unless we get shot at. And as soon and there's usually a bunch of us. Uh, just recently we had like a fully crude hammerhead and we were kind of dancing around a Corsair and they one shot across the bow and i was like open up fire and it was just got an outside camera view and to have all of the guns just firing in one direction is just like that that kind of like star wars experience that we've always seen and always wanted so uh it's a lot of fun doing crime stuff because one you you have missions that many people haven't tried before there's a lot of tisha missions Rudo. Unfortunately, Wallace Klim has been finicky with those, but Wallace Klim as well. A lot of Vaughn missions that lead up to, you know, fighting in, in, you know, big ship battles and stuff. So it's been a lot of fun, not only for me to do it, but to bring people along who haven't gotten a chance to do those missions and to see them towards the end of, you know, whatever play session we have say like, oh, that was so much fun that that might have been the most fun and uh we like to run around and do like regular missions you know in bunkers and stuff so we have to get out of the ship and we could be under fire you know the second that we leave and go down to the bunker from a, a bounty hunter coming in and actually that happened last week as well during that whole firefight and we had to hunker down in the bunker and the elevator came down as a bounty hunter we took him out it's it i feel like it's almost kind of rare that you get a chance to do on foot fps pvp in the live build versus 
you know, arena commander. And it's so exciting. Like, I feel like that's some of the most adrenaline rush type of scenarios that you can be in. And it's just such a blast, you know, trying to coordinate, getting somebody to come pick you up. But I live for those those moments, which, you know, could be far and, you know, few and far between, but uh, it's it's worth it. What you're saying is the real star citizen are the people we murder along the way. Exactly right. And ironically, I've I've met some fantastic people doing crime too. Uh, some PvP orgs, and I've gotten a chance to fly along with them. And I, I dare I say it's helped me actually get into the last Atmo esports event that happened at the last sitcon. And that was so much fun because I got a chance to uh, fly alongside one of my friends in Shadow Moses and we did pretty good. Like we, uh, I was, I was really proud. And then we got a chance to be in another tournament. So I'm not by any means top PVP or at all, but I just enjoy it so much. It's, it's so much fun. I think some of my favorite gameplay in this game is that sort of good faith in universe PVP where both parties are engaging with the system and doing the thing and you just get some great interactions uh, and having the interactions in global chat afterwards like, oh, you got me. I'll get you next time. But I think a lot of people are afraid to engage in illegal activities because they don't want to wind up in pleasure forever. It can be kind of a bummer. Have you become an expert in <laughs> breaking out of pleasure or do you do your time? I've done a bunch of the runs out of Klesher. I call it my home home location. It really is like Area 18 is my secondary home, but Klesher is my first. I joke around that like the, the cops there fold up my, my towels into like little elephant animals on my bed and they leave chocolates for me because I'm there so often. But I would love to see if CIG has some metrics on how many escape attempts each person has. And I would just love to see how many because it's got to match the amount of times I've probably logged into the game. <laughs> You know, be it uh, getting sent there by NPCs or other players or just, you know, the game at large, somebody on CIG side hitting the big red button. But uh, yeah, it's seven minutes is usually our, our escape time. So anytime somebody comes to pick us up, like give us seven minutes, we'll be right there. You get a, a scoop up and peace out. So yeah, and, and to your point, Clasher can be uh, really difficult, if, especially if it's your first time because you don't know really what to do. You get this mission to clear an oxygen machine and you don't know where it is or how to go about it. So I made a little video on like not only how to do the escape, but for org, we have like a listing of the depths and the routes and, you know, how many, what do you have to return to get certain amount of merits and stuff like that. So I think making it more understandable and tangible to get out in a normal amount of time helps a lot of people kind of, you know, see it as almost just like, all right, there's risk involved, but it's not so terrifying once you know, you know, like what your options are to uh, to get out. As med runners, we do occasionally end up with crime stats because sometimes you have to take down the security. Sometimes you deal with other people. And I've had newer players who get down in Clusher and see their sentence of, you know, 48 hours. And they're like, oh, well, <laughs> this just ruined my weekend. I was going to play Star Citizen and now I can't. And we're like, no, no, like there are things you can do to get out fairly quickly if you're not interested in med running or even not that long if you're still interested in, in not being a criminal on the outside. <laughs> I got to give a big thumbs up to CIG for putting in that uh, Rudo mission that allows you to go through the depths to escape, not the depths, but go through the escape route, collect the crypto key. Hopefully there's an Ursa rover out there. That's That's been a point of contention for many, many patches. But uh, if you get one, you, you go out to the cutlass, you insert the crypto key, boom, crime stat's done. You're done in like, you know, 15, 20 minutes in a perfect world. But um, I'm glad that CIG has kind of uh, turned their eye towards some more of the crime stuff that exists because it's it's so much fun. Even that mission itself is is like really exciting because you might make the escape. But, well, now the server knows that you're an escapee. You might have some friends showing up before you get to the down cutlass. <laughs> I mean, right now, realistically, in Star Citizen, it's the interaction yeah. that makes the fun, right? Med Runner is an entirely made up game loop. A lot of the game loops that people enjoy, for the most part, are almost entirely player generated. And, you know, you talk about a perfect world. Star Citizen is, it, it's a world. Technically, right. <laughs> I suppose, maybe several worlds. Yeah. It's, it's always interesting to hear how people take this game and make up basically their own game inside the game. 
Yeah, absolutely. And uh, it's been really cool to um, get invites from like other orgs who are doing events as well, where I think for science recently did one where uh, we were basically all on an island and they had like loot boxes set up and, and it was it's such a cool idea. So to see ideas pop up, you know, every so often with it, it kind of breathes, uh, you know, uh, fresh air into it because we can log in and just do our missions and log out and it gets a little bit stagnant but to have stuff like that show up every so often is just it's so nice to see people still putting together events and all that so speaking of like building community so much of the gameplay being community driven you've built quite a community as well with your stream when did you start streaming and what was the appeal to move into that space i think i started around like uh on on twitch around 20 uh it's got to be 2016 i think or 2018 I, I basically did most of elite dangerous uh i would say 95 percent on twitch was all elite dangerous so it might have been even before maybe 2017 but that community has always been so incredibly welcoming and will walk you through everything you know we all come from elite so we know that the bgs and the power play stuff and how that all works and you know running in uh you know squadrons which were player groups back in the day and the lore is such a huge part of it too exploration combat so i started out with that and then it was around uh 2019 that i started playing star citizen started off very slow towards the i think it was like october but it really scratched that itch because i was you know kind of tapering off of elite and had played no man's sky and i want to say maybe dual universe around that time as well so i was looking for something that kind of had that feel that elite dangerous did and then so i think 2020 was when it was like almost all star citizen with some other games here and there but uh that's that's when i had started and and still it's the the main game that i've been playing on on twitch and ironically offline as well though i'm slightly embarrassed to say that out loud <laughs> <laughs> so streaming an alpha game you know you've already talked about sometimes playing star citizen is a bit like summiting a mountain that must be frustrating sometimes to summit that mountain live on stream mm-hmm what is it like trying to consistently make in-game content in a game like Star Citizen that's constantly changing and frequently misbehaving? Yeah, it's it really is tough. Uh, thankfully, you have some patches that are like uh, introduce new game mechanics and gameplay loops that, you know, you can if you think about it from a content creation perspective, like, oh, you know. We could probably do this for a while and, you know, incorporate this and that, especially with the amount of crime stuff that we end up doing. Like incorporating that is very fun. Uh, we've had some instances where I think when salvaging was was pretty new and the um, the reclaimer had just gotten the ability to do the salvaging. It's like, you know, what we should do. We should all get crime stat fives and live off a of reclaimer and do some salvaging. So we, you know, stuffed it with boxes and went out and did salvage and got vehicles you know, on there as well. And it was really tough, but it was so much fun. So, uh, you know, those are some examples of, of good times and some are a lot more difficult, but I think having a, you know, a, a repertoire of doing different types of things like that. Uh, one of the things I like to do is set a timer for either two or three hours. And so if I have a crime stat, I, I start out with a single seater. If I can survive for two hours in a single seater with a CS5, perfect. I graduate to a two seater and then do that for two hours. And then we go all the way up to the A2 or, you know, whatever eight seater that we can that we can get our hands on. And that's a lot of fun, too, because uh, not only is it exciting for the whole time, but it can stretch through, you know, a few sessions, a few gameplay sessions and stuff like that. But um, I think one important thing that I, I actually have sticky notes on my monitor <laughs> is to try and smile and have a good time because <laughs> even when you know you're, you're falling through the ground or your ship blows up or there's an invisible asteroid or you get a ctd or you know a server error getting a chance to play this with other people i think which is the, the biggest part for me is the best part of it for me because growing up on you know solo single player games almost exclusively like i want to say it wasn't until probably i don't know 20 14 that i had played like my first mmo really so playing with others outside of just you know 
couch play, Smash Brothers, Soul Calibur, all that stuff. That was, it was pretty new to me. So uh, being able to kind of like ride that wave of excitement in playing with other people and, you know, having them come and maybe pick us up because our ship blew up for no reason or, you know, we got stranded somewhere. Instead of viewing it as like a negative all the time, trying to at least see if there's some way to recover or salvage whatever you know whatever we're doing uh you know and, and I, I do think constructive criticism of of certain things is incredibly healthy because if it goes unsaid then it's never gonna get you know attention on it or, or fixed but i think that's the the biggest thing is being able to try and turn it into something that can be you know maybe a little bit longer you're sitting there maybe for 15 20 minutes literally not doing anything while you're waiting for a pickup but thankfully we got you know the, the team and, and the party to come scoop us and you know revive us and pick us up from prison as they often do <laughs> you know you joke about the maybe not quite so much joke but you talk about the the remembering have to smile sometimes you know we deal with and I'm sure everybody who plays this game deals with those frustrations sometimes. And it can be really hard. Um, we were teaching a lesson. Um, one of the things I do for Medrunner is I'm the academy director. And so we try and the, the new people who come in, we try and provide them with a solid foundation because some of the things in Star Citizen aren't always the most intuitive. And then Medrunner itself isn't always the most intuitive. So we're trying to set them up with a foundation. And we were doing what we call a lesson zero, which is the like, you have walked through the door and know very little about either Medrunner or Star Citizen, and we're trying to build that foundation for you. And literally nothing was working. The server kept crashing. The freight elevator was eating the boxes full of stuff that was meant for the players. Uh, ships were just spontaneously exploding in hangars for no reason or falling through floors. And we're about halfway through this, and I'm like massaging my temples out of just like, <laughs> yep. <laughs> I'm going to take my computer and I'm going to throw it out the window. <laughs> And where's that uninstall button? <laughs> the day is the day, finally. <laughs> right. I'm going to do it. <laughs> right. I'm free of this, you know, 12 year long curse that I've been suffering from. But like you said, I took a step back and I'm like, here's the thing. This is a thing that I'm with people I enjoy. I'm taking the time to build this community and build this with people. And yeah, we're going to face some challenges. But like, again, the, the fun is the thing that we're finding in here. And yeah. Mm -hmm. if we can't adapt around this like man this is a lesson that doesn't matter like it matters but like no one's gonna get hurt here if we can't adapt around these kind of things like come on <laughs> yeah and and to your point too i feel like uh especially getting into those early on kind of you know puts that pragmatic qa uh type of mentality into people so that you know when they see something kind of acting up or they see an issue they're you know hopefully knee-jerk reaction is to okay you know let's let's do it this way instead because i can already see you know the lift is being a little bit weird so we're probably going to run into a server error which means we're going to drop through the ground so and and that for us too is something that we've had to kind of uh you know keep an eye out for you know and trusting the gut like does the, ser does the server feel off is it is it just me or do you guys feel like the server's off yeah okay let's switch <laughs> you know the vibe on this one, I don't yes. like it. <laughs> it took just a little too long for my door to open. Right, nah. yeah. <laughs> Global chat's just full of, uh, is missions, are missions working for anybody? Like, ooh. I can't get out of my seat. Like, right. Oh, boy. <laughs> is anyone else stuck in bed? <laughs> yeah. Sometimes the game bugs are the content, right? I, I, we talk a lot about making your own fun in this game, making your own content in this game. One of the things that happens a lot in Medrunner is what we call the Medrunner special. This happens if you are sometimes stuck in a bed, incapacitated in a weird spot where, for whatever reason, the med pen or the paramed gun just will not lock onto you. Mm -hmm. uh, what we can do is we can incapacitate you and then tractor you away. <laughs> Lovingly, right? They're, it's all full of love, you know? <laughs> you know, talking to a client in Proxcoms, I am now going to knock you out. Please remain calm. You are being treated to the Medrunner special, and I will tractor beam you up out of this cave that you can't climb out of. Have fun. You are being rescued. Please do not resist. That's what I was thinking of, yeah. <laughs> that meme makes its way frequently around the, the Discord server. Oh, man, I know exactly what you're talking about. Oh, my gosh. The amount of times that we've had to, like, uh, you know, we, we've broken into prison a few times and have had to deal with issues with that and remembering, like, okay, who tractored who? Because if somebody else does it, then it's supporting and it doesn't work right and, you know, 
we have to all backspace. Now we all go to prison. So there's so many little intricacies that, like you said before, somebody just joining, they will have no idea about, you know, like uh, about incapacitating, you know, do I shoot the arm or the head? Like the different things like that. There's so much density to the game already just with intended mechanics. And then you layer in the unintended mechanics, the bugs, the kind of things where people are like, oh, that's just a Star Citizen thing. It can be very challenging to teach new players the game when something strange happens and they're like, why did that happen? It's like, no idea. It's just a Star Citizen thing. Could be fixed next week. Why does that man have another entire person poking out of their stomach? Eh, don't worry about it. That's just, that's, that's normal. Can't worry about it. You always say yeah. features, not bugs. All yeah. features. We actually, for a long time in Academy, had a, uh, it's like a very much a swear jar. Like anytime you say Star Citizen is going to Star Citizen or it's a, a feature, not a bug, you had to put a dollar in to donate towards a charity. That's great. That charity is going to get a lot of money. <laughs> uh, yeah. The the year we did it and, and paid it out, it was, it was over $100 I donated. Oh, yeah. Yep. <laughs> was that during 318? It was the 318, 319 era. It was a bad time. <laughs> a lucrative year for that charity. <laughs> yeah. Those were our dark times. <laughs> we didn't even run. We did a couple of solo missions and then the org just decided like, hey, it's not it's not worth the pain to try to play right now. <laughs> I think Starfield came out around that time, if I remember right. I might be. It did. And I played a lot of that. <laughs> Me too. Exactly. I was like, we're just going to shelve this and let's just play something else for a little bit. <laughs> so I want to make sure that we talk about your iconic mustache. You are known for this fabulous handlebar mustache, Thank you. which I'm sure must be quite the commitment. Do you have any routine tips you would like to share? How do you how do you maintain that? Yeah, uh, I'm not. I don't have a sponsorship with them or anything, but I I've been using Clubman's mustache wax for years now. Uh, this is probably I think like my my thirteenth mustache because every so often it's just one of those days where you're like I just I can't. And then whoop, I have done it for charity a couple times, and it was completely worth it. But uh, yeah, it's um, <laughs> I I drink coffee out of straight from the coffee pot because it's easier with a mustache because i know i'm gonna drink five cups of coffee sure, that's the reason yeah exactly <laughs> i'm just lazy i don't want to pour it into a cup and then back into my face and wash two things yeah it's the mustache it's got a little cover it protects it from keeping wet but yeah it is like eating burgers or soup or sandwiches or you know anything that you gotta shove in your face hole can be a little bit annoying so it's like you have your food in the right hand and a napkin in the left and at SitCon, if, if we end up hanging out with anybody going out to eat, you'll see it's literally like just muscle memory at this point. But yeah, it's been a lot of fun. At this point, I can't really get rid of it permanently, I don't think, because all of the channel stuff is all mustache oriented. And I really don't want to have to redo, you know, emotes and themes and business cards and stuff like that. <laughs> all of your emotes, all of your branding, have yes. this mustache. <laughs> Do you yep. get a lot of opportunities to twirl it villainously while you're doing your crimes? Oh, quite the quite the amount of times. Uh, there have been plenty of times where we take out like about I call it reverse bounty hunter hunting. So when a bounty hunter comes after us, we will track them down. If I see they're going to, you know, um, I don't know, let's say uh, Hurston or one of the moons, we'll go. All right, I see where they're going. They're going to Magda. Follow them. And we drop into the OM point, and we take him out, and that's where the mustache gets the, the twirl that it oh so deserves. I, I need to know, have you ever, like, tied or incapacitated a bounty hunter and put them on the railroad tracks at Microtech? Oh, I have not yet. That's a great idea. I know what we're doing. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to name it the Snidely Whiplash uh, episode, <laughs> Rocky and Bullwinkle special. <laughs> Which one is any key? Right. Yeah, exactly. We did have an idea uh, once the whole like bounty hunting thing comes into play with the pods and stuff to <laughs> incapacitate the bounty hunters, put them into a pod and drop them into the hole in Klesher. And, <laughs> and that's our reverse bounty hunter loop. <laughs> Just running around in your the um, Titan, the Titan with the um, pods in the back, and just shoving yeah, the right. pods out the back exactly. door. <laughs> More meat for the grinder. It's the closest thing we have to a sarlacc pit. <laughs> exactly. Thank you for flying, yeah. flying air pog nagas. We've returned to right. the center. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>
The next time you feel the desire to go hurtling through space in a small metal can, we hope you'll think of us. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> My favorite is when they when they meet up and uh, and we're in like they might be in like a a great bounty hunter ship, you know, F eight, F seven eight, Mark two, because you know clearly the meta more recently. And then we're in a hammerhead with supporting ships, and it goes very quickly. <laughs> I almost kind of feel bad. But, you know, dropping them off at Clusher, it gives them a chance to, you know, relax, unwind. A nice uh, day spa, really. Kick their heels up, go, go play with some shiny minerals. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> so, speaking a little bit back to CitizenCon, uh, I hear that you will be at CitizenCon. Yeah, yep, absolutely. I'm really stoked to be uh, getting a chance to go over to the UK. I got a chance once before for frontier developments but this will be uh the first time going over for anything star citizen related i will be going over it's only about a 13 hour flight for me i think not including layover so needless to say i don't head over that way very often yep i sadly can't go this year uh i I was excited to go but i just i can't make the timing work out but i'm excited to see our org and i'm excited to see some of the people i know and hopefully uh i'll get uh, a tour via virtual of sitcom that should be nice yeah absolutely virus did this very nice thing for me uh during defense con in game i could not get my game to cooperate so he took me around defense con in game on a stream and discord so i could see it oh that's great um get some information because we were going to record a podcast episode about it so i will be attempting to return the favor for him this year at sitcom but the sort of the opposite way around i'll do it in real life for him uh instead of in game so i'm looking forward to that um med runner will have a booth we're gonna be there we've got um a bunch of people coming i am so excited about the booth um it's gonna be incredible and we will actually have uh freebies and like swag to give away for people we're gonna have you know like lanyards and wristbands we'll have these um we're gonna do these like membership cards with redeemable codes so uh i'd love to see you drop by i'd love to say hello in person 100 percent, i'll be there absolutely i still have a bunch of this stuff from from last sitcom like still on my desk so i'm looking forward to running around and grabbing as as much swag and little and little doodads as possible it's my favorite part of any convention um i am that person where if you're like oh we've got pens i'm like yes give me one of your cheap branded pens i love it this will sit on my desk for years the best guy is the guy who has bags yeah you hit the bag table first exactly i recently went to a, a convention where that's all the guy brought is he had four different branded bags and you saw them everywhere that guy got more brand recognition that weekend because he was smart and had the like the really cheap but fairly nice for a con the string bags that you can turn into a backpack right yeah he had like dozens of those branded and it was just everywhere because you can have this ridiculous amount of swag that you're getting but literally no place to put it i'm really excited there's also a couple of bar citizen takeovers so i will i think i get in Thursday night. I'm going to try to hit the Thursday night bar citizen. I'll be at the Friday night bar citizen. Same. Mm -hmm. That's going to be the big one, I think. That's where most everybody's going to be. uh... Yeah, the Friday night one is actually ticketed. Yes, it is. Yep. So I'm pretty stoked for that. Yeah, me too. It's cool to see them like basically shutting down a portion of the street and just having, you know, it's such a a niche uh, subject when you think about it in in the realm of like other games or gaming in general. And uh, to be able to have that large of a presence to shut down a portion of the the street within like an official event like that is just such a cool thing specifically about Star Citizen. Like that, that's pretty wild. And Manchester's not a small city, right? Mm-hmm. It's it's very cool. I'm so stoked. And then, of course, there's yeah, there's also the Atmo event Sunday night, which I will also be at. And I'm very much looking forward to. Yeah, absolutely. It's cool to see how long it's going to be going as well, from four to basically midnight. And I think a lot of CIG is going to be there as well. So it'll be cool to actually hang out with them because a lot of times, like I got a chance to hang out with with Jake and and uh, hang out with Zylo for a little bit around the Atmo esports. But they have to be like on, you know, ready for the next panel or if they're going up on stage or getting all that together. So it's nice to hang out with them when they can actually like just relax and chill and pry a few secrets from their brains. Right, exactly. Here's a drink. Also... (laughs) When is the Zeus MR coming up? <laughs> How do you feel about the Polaris? <laughs> right. <laughs> what are the juicy tidbits that you are hoping to hear or discover at SitCon this year? Like, what are you expecting or wishing for? Yeah, I, I think um, 
we've, we've been talking about this probably for about a month or two. And I was thinking about it like with it, obviously I think a lot of it's going to be Squadron 42 related. Um, I was hoping to see something similar to what they had set up at the last one where it was like a pyro section with a bunch of PCs and people could, you know, take a half hour, 45 minutes to kind of, you know, jump onto a PC and see pyro. I was hoping for some type of, you know, playable little maybe 15, 20 minute intro to Squadron 42. If I'm right, it seems like we're going to be not getting something like that hands on for the attendees, but I think they're going to be playing a decent portion, dare I say 20 minutes, maybe 25 minutes of like an intro mission to Squadron 42. And I could I could see them maybe giving a date, but uh, anytime, you know, like I always say no dates, no promises with SC. And then if there is a date, I say tack on like 50% more time to that maybe. So normal game development betas usually see it like two years so i could see it being like three years from last year when they said feature complete which to me is like okay the alpha is done now we got the balancing polishing performance passes all that stuff so wait you think they do optimization and balancing i don't know <laughs> i feel like it's more or less chuck it against the wall what sticks all right it's good move on to the next module <laughs> We just yeah. we throw actual spaghetti at a wall full of code <laughs> words and write the code that way. <laughs> yep. Yeah, I, I could see them saying like end of the year 2026 and then it, that gets pushed, obviously. But um, I think we will see uh, they'll probably announce like a PTU for 4.0 in, de in December, I would say. So we've been joking about it that they've been saying 4.0 by the end of the year. Like they didn't say what type of 4.0? <laughs> Evocati? Did you not hear the, the news that broke like an hour ago as of this recording? I did see some stuff show up actually, yeah. There's some pretty solid evidence that 4.0 Evocati coming very, very soon. Yep. So potentially soon enough that there might be 4.0 PTU? Before end of the year, I expect, yeah. I think so. Yeah, I could see them dropping... Evocati probably like right after maybe like a week after sitcom maybe yeah i think it's gonna be the secret and drop it during sitcom that would be amazing that would be brutal that i it would be so tough yeah like, give me a laptop give me a computer i'm gonna be bringing a laptop with me but i don't know that i have any laptop available to me that can play star citizen <laughs> in any capacity that i would want it to even my current quote gaming laptop i don't think would be very happy with me <laughs> so if they drop it at citizen con i'm gonna be so jealous I'm going to be so sad. <laughs> <laughs> it's how they figured out how to get everybody out of the convention center on time. The last announcement's a secret. Right. <laughs> and it's just Chris Roberts comes up and stands up and goes, all right, everybody, it's been a great convention. What I want you all to know is that uh, Evocati for 4.0 dropped six seconds ago. Uh, <laughs> so the faster you get out of here, right. the faster you could go play. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, everybody. <laughs> Con cleaned up in record time. Yep. No 4.0 until all the trash is picked up off the floor. Cue the Benny Hill music, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's cleaner than when they got here. How did that work? How did they make the carpets actually glimmer? They're carpets. <laughs> That's how you motivate a group of Star Citizen players. Yes. That's how you do it. Exactly. You hear the rally cry from everybody. Oh, man. I cannot wait for 4.0, though. I... I know there's going to be a ridiculous amount of bugs. I'm expecting, I don't know, 50, 50 patches. I think we hit somewhere like 39 patches, including Evocati for 324. Uh, so I'm fully expecting this to be like a crazy amount of patches to get it out the door. And then a mess of hot fixes after that. And What's your over under for how quickly the first hot fix comes out for 4.0? Like an hour, a day? Probably about an hour, I would say. I could I could absolutely see it. Like they they push it to live and they go, oh shoot. Um yeah, we see this. That this didn't really show up because we didn't have this amount of people. Uh hot fix is incoming. <laughs> Roughly hourly patches after that. It was an early 3.0 patch that I downloaded as soon as you could. And before I had finished downloading, they had already pushed a hot fix. Oh, yep. <laughs> yep. I very much see that. We forgot to let everybody log in. Hot fix incoming. <laughs> it was something to do with the ASOP terminals. Like you couldn't summon like most of the ships. Oh, God. <laughs> that sounds like any day, you know, with the past few. <laughs> 
what about 4.0 are you most looking forward to of the things that we know of so far? Uh, the asteroid bases um, that they've been teasing. I'd, I don't know what it is. I think it's because I love the Expanse so much and the idea of, you know, being a belter, you know, even though it's it's kind of glamorized in the show and the books, they, they go into more detail. It's it's a very difficult life, obviously. But the idea of just living out in space, like kind of semi permanently like that and uh, not specifically having asteroid bases of our own, but it is that first kind of step that's leading towards that and having like abandoned ones and um you know, special loot around that area and just seeing the vast sizes of like the asteroid stuff. That's that's always been one thing that I've loved about uh, Star Citizen is that I feel like when you see large elements like that, the perspective uh, comes along with that. So uh, some of the new places that we got a chance to see on Pyro, when you get out on foot and you look up and you see what looks like a refinery that's just tens of floors above and would take you probably, I think, 10 to 15 seconds of falling from the top to actually hit the bottom. So huge, huge, uh, you know, settlements and locations like that. Um, I, I can I compare it to kind of like Elite where we would fly around ships like the Anaconda, the Corvette, uh, the Cutter, and these massive ships that are hard to kind of mentally see the perspective of flying into these Corioluses, not really knowing how huge these actually are. I'm excited to see things like that in Pyro, like those outposts, like those asteroid bases. Um, and also, no crime stats, so we can just go nuts out there with our, with our little crime posse. <laughs> You mentioned the perspective. It's one of the things that I know some people will occasionally complain like, oh, it takes forever to get to some of these places. But mm -hmm. it's one of the things that I've actually really, really liked about Star Citizen is that because they physicalize almost everything to a fault, sometimes you actually get a sense of scale and it leaves you with, a, oh, this is actually a huge place. Like distro centers feel like this huge industrial complex. It takes time to traverse them. And yeah, sometimes you're like, oh, man, I'm out of the action for like 10 minutes. But like it lends the game such a sense of scale that you don't get in a lot of other games. And it's say what you want about Star Citizen, but it is a visually gorgeous and impactful game to an extent that I don't think I've seen. Anywhere. Yeah, I agree. I like also with the amount of time that it that it takes to get to those places and uh, you know, get to like, even just the entrance for the distribution centers. I love that aspect to it because it forces you to prepare better. Whereas like in other games, I feel like, you know, oh, I got my stuff. I'll just go. And then if I die, whatever, like I'll just pop up and go again. But with this, like, uh, okay, do I set my spawn closer? Uh, do we set it to uh, the medical Ursa? Uh, do we have enough guns, ammo, armor? Uh, do we have a ship that can, you know, either take out the turrets or or help you know get people in and back out again uh, and i think one of the the key parts of star citizen that grabbed me was the idea of death of a spaceman and i'm glad they touched on that semi-recently i think it was earlier this year i like that idea of having to decide like is this a fight that i should go into am i ready for it do i have what's needed do i have med pens or you know the ammunition the, the right type of weapon to go into this be it pve or pvp on ground in ships uh whatever the case is and i i like that idea so if we end up getting downed or our ship blows up i like trying to extend that out and be like all right this is my character I have to keep this character alive for as long as I can. You know, I've always liked that idea of uh, not only having that eventually implemented more so, but that I can do that now if I choose to. And that's kind of one of the things that allows us as Medrunners to have our game, right? Is the, hey, okay, I've been shot in a bunker. It'll take Medrunner 15 minutes to get here. But if I have to go back and start over, you know, it's going to be 20, 25 minutes for me to get back out here. Um, I'm going to have to do some of the steps along the way. I'm going to lose some of the stuff that I have with me that I might really like. And those consequences, um, varied as they are, let us do the thing that we do. <laughs> so, you know, it's important to us. Yeah. <laughs> And I'm sure you guys get it. It's not just the same exact, like, go down to a bunker, res them. Different missions that, they, that they've been playing, be it good guy or bad guy side, blue or red missions, or, you know, different areas. So I'm sure you guys are going into different uh, situations almost every single time. And I, I love that, that it's not just, you know, you go out, you do your mission, you're back. <laughs> 
I'm trying to remember the name of the event, but it was the one with like the cultists that kept taking over things. Xeno Threat. Yes. Xeno Threat produced some of my absolute favorite rescues because there were all sorts of different weird locations and it was just a very different set of environments that you went to go get these. And the PVE threat was so much higher than you're normally used to, right? You know, the SPK Xeno Threat takeovers were some of my absolute favorite experiences as a med runner. And, you know, there's like players and 45 <laughs> NPCs. Right. <laughs> bodies everywhere <laughs> oh it was it was such a good time you had to be careful about how you handle those missions because you just couldn't bring enough ammunition to to just shoot your way through it fill up a backpack and make sure you bring a backup backpack to that one for more ammo <laughs> yeah we had we, we were calling them speed balls on the cutlasses outside so you could go out get more ammunition and come back inside <laughs> <laughs> The other nice thing about Xenothreat was it gave us some really interesting space combat rescues. Mm. We have a lot of really phenomenal pilots in Medrunner who rarely get to flex some of those skills. Most of the time, if we're bringing a support wing on a mission, it's because we think that there might be maybe a PvP or PvE fighter threat. And nine times out of ten, there's nothing there. Right. Xenothreat gave us the opportunity to actually have people who were like, oh, I finally get to flex and work with my fighter wing to clear the area and allow us to get in and get the client out safe and also have some really cool interactions with other players who weren't in the team but were friendly pilots. It was just something that we don't get to do a lot as med runners, and it was so much fun, and I miss it. It was frustrating because the server performance was absolute garbage <laughs> yeah <laughs> but i still miss the excellent large scale furball dog fighting space combat that which is not getting most of the time yeah being part of an ops like that where people are calling out targets coming in from headings and, you know clear comms coming in hot that kind of stuff is just it's so exciting and i don't remember last time unless it's you know i'm, I'm sure maybe it happens in eve every so often because that's the only other thing i can think of that has you know maybe large scale activity like that but if i want to be in that much pain i'll just stick with star citizen and my my meager spreadsheets with this <laughs> don't you besmirch my spreadsheets i have myriad <laughs> spreadsheets oh same yeah I, I get made fun of for how many spreadsheets i have a couple people have sent me like all right if you don't get this for your bad day you're you're uh you're dead to us and it's literally a, a comforter that's a spreadsheet just sells on sell. <laughs> yeah, it's it's so exciting to have ops like that happen where it's not just, you know, the on on foot team, but the pilots actually get a chance to be a part of that as well and, and call out their shots. And it's it's exciting to see other people be that excited when they're part of, a, um, you know, a group op like that. We try to recreate some of that in-house um, with our academy. That's our sort of internal instructional department. One of our academy branches is aerospace, and it can be tough sometimes to find ways to both practice but also train those skills. Yeah, There's a degree of skill decay, right? Mm -hmm. Especially for PvP combat. Arena commander open play is not always really the best place to practice those skills. So we spend a lot of time thinking about how do we set up some of these scenarios internally to give our pilots a chance to either practice very specific skills, right? Like disengagement or engaging larger craft with a smaller fighter, engagements at a disadvantage, flying with a wing, things like that in a way that's like fun, but also structured and educational. Yeah, I think that's the biggest part of that. Yeah, that's tough. <laughs> We do a lot of these internal events just to kind of stay sharp because we don't get a lot of this in-game naturally all the time. I wish we got more. And I hope as we approach things like server meshing, maybe more regular uh, server-wide events like Xenothreat, Siege of Orison, Blockade Runner, I wanted to love more, but the payout was too low. But high density of enemies was fun in space. And as the game sort of progresses, seeing more of these more frequently really excites me. Yeah, me too. Especially being able to have more, uh, not only just see like Stanton, well, for now until Pyro's around, uh, have more of a population and, you know, seeing people going here and there from the space station down to the planet. I think naturally, like you said, there's going to be more force interactions, whether they be 
you know, good or bad or, or what have you. But uh, I'm, I'm hoping it starts to pick up because uh, I feel like recently with the, the, all the changes to like master modes and the flight model, and now we're getting the new MFDs and the power, I feel like we've kind of seen a bit of a gradual decline in some of those natural occurrences that we see other other players in like you know maybe about six months ago we would have been seeing maybe at least a bounty hunter every hour now it seems to be a little bit less i'm hoping that with like 4.0 coming and ptus coming out and eventually pyro we'll see more people coming back into it where we could have scenarios like that pop up again get a little bit more excitement back into the game mm -hmm. i think a lot of people were maybe discouraged by the master modes changes or feeling like, man, I have to now learn how to fly all over again to a certain extent, maybe felt a little discouraging. I certainly heard that from other members of our community who were interested in coming back to the game, right? Oh, I've taken a break since 3.20. It's 3.23. Oh, now I don't know how to fly anymore. These big changes are part of the game, but they can be kind of hard to adjust to if you're not a hardcore player playing all the time and playing on the PTU and adjusting to all those things. But I think 4.0 will be so irresistible. I think so too. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. You're going to have to come back. I'll say Master Modes was easy for me because I was a bad pilot to begin with, so it didn't make me any worse. We already had to reteach you how to fly. <laughs> <laughs> New and exciting ways to be bad at this. But that irresistibility 4.0 has been on the horizon for such a long time. It's going to be such a colossal shift for the game. Yeah, I agree. You know, you're not going to be able to stay away. Even if it's just to kind of like fly through and see some of the new areas and just get a chance to see the jump from one system to another that's been talked about since eons ago, just to be able to do that. And, you know, hopefully they land in Pyro, but... <laughs> I, I'm just excited for the opportunity to do it, and I'm excited to see where that goes. As somebody who did buy ships explicitly for exploration uh, and wants to do that, um, I'm super excited to see that we've at least made the tiniest of baby steps in that direction. And just there's going to be new and exciting things to see, and it's been a long time since we've really had like a new thing to look at. Yeah, they've added settlements and animals, and they changed out Seraphim Station for, for the greatest station that ever was. Greatest station. Um, Pour one out. But like, this is going to be a whole new realm of new stuff to look at. And just that that shine and glimmer of the chance to see you will for the first time in a long time in Star Citizen have the opportunity to be the first player to see a thing. Yeah, true. That's that's a really good way to put it. It almost kind of encapsulates with all of us coming from Elite, like finding that system for the first time or finding that planet for the first time or having that footfall on a planet for the first time. Like I've uh, I, I wasn't huge into exploration because I felt like with my horrifyingly bad luck, everything was just potato after potato. And uh, what are they? Bark mounds, I think, in, in Elite. I only bark mounds for me every single time. Like <laughs> there was bark mounds as far as the eye can see. So to be able to uh get back into an exploration type of mentality like i'm i'm really looking forward to that even though i love crime and i love shooting i'm super stoked to be able to just like jump in a ship and fly around and hopefully have some new things to to find similar to like when new crime yeah, new crime exactly <laughs> i'm gonna find crime all over the place acidic caves new things crime. to smuggle <laughs> yeah right. new places to commit new right. crimes <laughs> new places to put the bodies <laughs> <laughs> that was such a draw of games like Illy Dangerous and No Man's Sky mm -hmm. and the exploration potential in Star Citizen is short-lived because it is not this colossal or procedurally generated universe. I have lots of prospective new players ask me like, oh, uh, is there a lot of exploring to do in Star Citizen? And I said, well... <sighs> You can, but you're not going to discover anything new, right. yep. you know, uh, even even once we have all the systems in place, you will be able to go everywhere and see everything. If you wanted to, you can go to Verse Guide and look up a map mm -hmm. and see absolutely everything that has ever been found. And trust me, by now, it's it has all been all found. Been yep. found. Yep. But, but that's I think gonna there be is something here. that's still fun right. about going and doing it yourself anyway even if you're not discovering it right it can still be an experience to stumble across something for the first time or have an opportunity to see you know a particular piece of landscape right on your own and it's still that sense of wonder stumbling across it like i didn't know this was here yeah, yeah. because eventually you're gonna know everything is there. yeah you're absolutely right like uh i think we had a mission at, at a cave or something recently 
and it was on Hurston, and it it was a a landscape that I hadn't seen before. There was like this small cave that was just tucked into this tree line, and the sun was setting, and it it reminded me that like I still get that kind of wow factor. Hit F four, zoom out, get a nice screenshot, and just kind of you know step back and take a look at it. So I'm hoping. Uh, for that also in Pyro, and even with the PTU that we that we played and got a chance to see a, a bunch of locations in there, like I I know we're gonna have so many of those like wow moments with some of these missions and new locations to go to on planets and planets that we that we haven't seen before because they just weren't in the PTU previously. That's such a good point, though, that this is still just an aesthetically gorgeous game. Mm-hmm. I Mm -hmm. still, uh, Academy does a little bit of a like promotion ceremony Mm -hmm. and I still catch these incredible screenshots, these great moments as the sun comes up over the mountains and the clouds are parting. Like, man, (laughs) the graphics in this thing are just juicy. This is beautiful. It really is. Even at places I go all the time, there are still all these little moments of wonder and I think that gets so overlooked as a part of the game mm-hmm. that you can stand somewhere and watch the sunrise in your space sim video game yep. and have this moment of your breath being taken yeah. away. Yeah, absolutely. And that, you know, people ask why we do that, that promotion ceremony. And, and one of the reasons is, is to get you somewhere that looks cool so that hopefully we give you a little bit of a, a scope back into how pretty this game can be. And I legitimately remember very recently we went on an alert and i'm just buzzing around in the redeemer because somebody thought it would be a good idea to make me the pilot (laughs) um and i'm circling overhead and this blizzard blows through and i'm like oh the weather looks pretty neat and then like just as it broke the sun was coming up over the edge of um of the horizon and it was backlighting the little like rock crags out there and i was just like oh Oh, man and then I almost crashed because I was. <laughs> I was just gonna say, yeah, like, it's happened to me a few times where I'm just staring. At it, like, oh right, I'm decoupled. I'm I'm drifting into a rock <laughs> yep. right now. Oh right, gravity. Right. <laughs> I've been in a I've been in a firefight, and I'm like, everybody, hang on, hang on. I gotta get I gotta get my right. camera out of my pocket. This this looks really cool. Keep shooting. I'm just gonna hang back here and uh, just play cameraman for a oh, little man. bit. Don't worry about we it. We need to have a set of armor that just says "press" on the back and the front of it. <laughs> I would love that. I would love oh. uh, for our internal media team to have a way to embed on alerts yes. without g- getting in the way or getting that shot. That would be great. Because, I mean, <laughs> technically, the Reliant, the Reliant Mako is there. It's the media ship, so they're halfway there. We just need some armor to go with it and the camera to work. And Ooh, golden. See? Yeah. Oh, that would be so cool. That's going to be one of those shot. new sets that's coming out. You know, they talk about the new specialized armor sets. I really want like a blue set with white press. Yes. Written across the front with like a like a body camera almost built into the front and back of the armor suit. Oh, that would Beautiful. be fantastic. You've oh, already got the camera so case cool. backpack. Like, True. You know, I know we use it as our med case, but the Mac Flex really looks like a, a professional photographer case. Yeah, it does. Already. <laughs> Oh, that would be delightful. You could have a little recording light on it. That would be yeah. so nice. <laughs> be so nice. Now, all they need to do is replace the rail gun with like a camera because it's already on your shoulder and then have a microphone for the other person. Boom. <laughs> Done. Ooh, I like that. Just I use like the rail that. gun. Right? We're, we're definitely <laughs> not. Uh, <laughs> look, you can either you can either perform this interview or We'll collect the information from your scattered bits of brain. It's up to you. <laughs> Change out the cartridge. I mean, the tape. <laughs> it's a it's a film cartridge. It's right. a VCR. We've just like every other piece of technology in this future world works worse than the tech I have right now. <laughs> exactly. Same thing with video cameras. <laughs> Why can't I have a garage? Yeah, we've actually for-, for my ship. <laughs> oh my gosh! Please. Night vision, radar, lidar, nope. you know, all Sun of the things that like, anything. yeah, <laughs> can I just have a tinting lens for my helmet? Like, even if it's manual at this point, yeah. I'll take it. Yep. <laughs> How much do I have to pay to get the windows on the Redeemer tinted? Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, as, as much as I know that some people would definitely have used it to do horrendous things, I would love just a touch more ship customization ability, yeah. like just, just, just a crumb of of customization ability and i know it often frequently goes terribly wrong in online video games but (laughs) it doesn't make me want it less 
yeah, want to put racing want, stripes on it. Oh, yeah. That's good. I want decals. You know, I obviously also want more ships to be nameable. That True. would be delightful. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But I want decals. I want more paints. I want racing stripes. I want to be able to, like, mark a kill tally on oh, my F7A. That. Oh, that would be that would so be cool. Sick. I also love I just want to be able to... that that pyro paint job that they have for the Corsair and Vulture and something else, I think, where it looks like graffiti on it. I would love to see more paint jobs like that for like other ships too. Just so cool. I mean, side note, I am super excited for the Google paint jobs. I just wish they were on ships that I actually cared oh, about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They're like, hey, buy this paint. And I'm like, I don't own any of those ships. They're like, have you considered purchasing them? I'm like, no, I haven't even considered it. <laughs> I'm certainly not going to purchase the ship for the paint. Right. I would purchase the sh- paint. I did for think about it, though. So, like, you, you, you almost got me there, Chris <laughs> the Roberts. You there. almost got me. <laughs> but if you made that paint for preferably my Titan, I think the Titan would look real sick with that paint job. Yeah. But, like, yeah, there's not enough paints that really take my breath away. Mm-hmm. I am happy we got the white Redeemer paint as a Mad Runner. Uh, it that. does real good seeing that flying cross microtech too is just so gorgeous oh it's so good i'm not a big fan of a lot of the ships in the solid white paint but the redeemer looks really I good oh yeah absolutely I'm, I'm the same way like the other one that i love too i think it's the best in show probably from i want to say 2022 or 21 uh, i got it for the valkyrie it's white with like gold uh short oh. stripes on it and the windows are tinted yeah. like gold i just oh i take I take that out whenever I can, even if it's overkill or I don't need it. I love looking at it. It's so nice. I'm not going to lie. I am very disappointed from this year's, uh, by the paints that have been leaked for this year's yeah. Bespin show. Yeah, they... I feel like, I think it was last year's, right? With that sort of duo chrome blue, purple, the blur hole. Yes. That looks so good. It really I does. mean, that paint looks so good. Yeah. And the white and the gold. And then we get what uh, I've heard several people um unaffectionately refer to as the twitch prime skin <laughs> that's, that's with so that very on. flat lilac purple yep. and the white and it just doesn't feel great yeah it's it's the worst on the leak of the f8c yep because there's there's so much white and the way it's color blocked it just doesn't really fit the lines of the ship it doesn't make the ship look better yeah, <laughs> i don't know how they ma- manage they that. kind of feel walked in for this year and which is kind of sad too because it's like 890 and uh terrapin's first year for like new paints like let, let's start this with a blast the f8 nuts the f8c doesn't have any other paints other than that concierge paint that's, oh, that's it true come on yeah exactly and i mean we mentioned white paints earlier and i want to i want to put it in here my favorite paint job is actually a mostly white paint job it's the hornet heart seeker oh, it's yes. custom to that one that you had to buy on the, oh, yeah. the valentine's day with the pinup and the little red accents, it is it is the ship that I, I know it is not perhaps the best meta, but if I end up going out as like a QRF support pilot, I'm taking my heart seeker yeah. because it's relatively effective mm-hmm. and it's just so pretty. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I, I think I waffled back and forth on it. Like I ended up getting it and then it was in buyback and it was like, well, you know, I haven't owned this in a while. Got it out of buyback and I, I melted it again and then I got it out of buyback again. I I. I always go back to that because I just I love the whole Hornet line as it is, but it's it's really cool to be able to have a secondary person uh, or if you don't, you, you can use all the guns. It's one of the only ships that you can still use like all the guns on it if you're if you're like soloing it. It's one of the things that I love about, yeah, the Heart Seeker and the Super Hornet. And they're also such iconic looking ships Mm -hmm. they have that classic aircraft fighter feel it's one of the things that makes the heart seeker paint look so good is it's this throwback to classic fighter jets yeah and i want more hornet paint that feel like that absolutely that that was my huge complaint about uh about fleet week is that you have all the hornets out but they're in like standard civilian paint like you're telling me the ue navy doesn't have its (laughs) own custom paint job i call bullshit like <laughs> absolutely yeah. it would be so cool is there anything else that you you wanted to talk about you wanted to cover about 3.24 or citizen con or anything that you've seen coming for 3.242 because i know that that's been out for a little bit right yeah i'm i'm honestly just excited to 
to go to SitCon to see. Like, I'm I'm super stoked about all the stuff that we're going to see on the panels, but I can't wait to actually see everybody in person. Like, it's my uh, my excuse to be social and get a chance to see everybody in, in person and try and remember everybody's real names versus, uh, like, screen names and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> It feels very fourth wall breaking to right. me. Yeah. So I've been in MedRunner for just about 10 months, and I've sort of built such very close friendships with a couple of people who will be going to CitizenCon. Oh, that's gonna be great. And it it feels weird. Yeah. It's going to be really weird, <laughs> but I'm so excited. This moment of um, I'm so familiar with these people's voices. Mm-hmm. But I don't know what they look like. Yep. And as somebody who has been a lifelong gamer, who has always developed very close friends with my online gaming community, this is not the first time I had a World of Warcraft guild that I was very close with. And a lot of those guys actually came out to my college graduation. Oh, awesome. And it was very cool and very surreal right. to sort of like take this into real space yes. <laughs> <laughs> and interact with people. But I'm so excited. It's why I'm taking a couple extra days both before and after the convention and also to get a chance to meet people like you in person, right? See? People from other orgs that I have talked to, meet people from other orgs that I have interacted with and admired and get to actually sit down and talk to them or grab a drink. Yeah, It's such a unique thing to be able to do in a video game community to come together in real world space. Yeah. <laughs> and I think it's so, I, I'm going to use just the word precious. I think it is so precious that we can do this. That's a great way to put it. Yeah. That, uh, I feel like I immediately felt that for the last sitcom, like whatever was happening on stage, super exciting. Even more so, I would say, because we are around the people that we've been hanging out with on you know discord in a game almost 24 <laughs> 7 and so uh <laughs> i quickly realized that like for me these kind of events are more getting a chance to be with everybody and uh it, it makes whatever we hear on stage like just like that much more special and always you know i'm keeping my expectations right in the middle not super hype not super oh it's going to be crap just right in the middle but getting a chance to be with other people that I've hung out with for so long in the audience and seeing it at the same time and seeing their expression is just that that to me is is what sitcom for me is all about. The community is so deeply at the heart of what makes Star Citizen Star Citizen. Mm-hmm. Being able to bring the community together is incredible. Yeah. You know, MedRunner is not a drama-free organization. I think if anybody tells you that their organization of more than five people is (laughs) drama-free, they are lying to you. Um, A lot. (laughs) And yet, (laughs) a lot. Um, And, you know, not just within MedRunner, but just general drama. I think everybody's experienced it in Star Citizen, both in their org and outside of the org. It feels like just, honestly, none of that matters when we get to Manchester, because it's so much more important than any of that yeah. this moment that we all get to experience whatever is happening on stage together mm-hmm. and what the game has for us next is so incredibly cool yeah absolutely and, and especially for your getting a chance to see some of the stuff ahead of time gives you time to plan for it you know obviously the execution of which might be completely different than what we thought seeing it on stage <laughs> and stuff but it's I, I feel like for orgs like yours getting a chance to even if it's uh virtually and, and seeing everything that's coming out virtually getting a chance to see all that stuff ahead of time allows for planning time and i remember a couple of panels uh that we sat through like we were theory crafting and just you know having a blast thinking about like <laughs> what's coming up and what we could do with this and like oh would it be cool if we could do that you know obviously cig could you know do a u-turn and then reverse key back and you know who knows but it's a lot of fun to be able to do that Yeah, there's so much joy in the looking forward. Even when it's stressful, I'm looking at lesson plans that I have written for Basic Flight Mm -hmm. that I know I'm going to have to change the (laughs) moment 3242 drops, but that's fine. I'm still excited about it, even though it's a little stressful and it's going to be some work for us. That's it's part of the game. Yeah, Part of the game in alpha is finding joy and excitement in all of the changes in the curveballs and sort of responding and preparing for those changes with your community. I don't think it would be any fun to do by myself to have to adapt and learn and shift, 
but with my community, with my team, with my crew, it's great. Awesome. Yeah. Having a support like that, especially with something that changes so often and so many issues that stem from it, you need to have a couple <laughs> people just like, oh, I feel you. Yep. Th this was a tough day. <laughs> but having that community, like you said, dealing with a game that can be frustrating to the point that I have legitimately thought about ripping my router out or tossing my computer <laughs> yeah. out the window. Um, and we also get that support. You come, you come to these communities with everybody comes with their own real life problems too. And having people who are there for you, even, even in that, that game environment can be hugely important. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, like I said, I will be at citizen con. I will be there Thursday bar night bar citizen, Friday night bar citizen, and probably at the Medrunner booth uh, all day Saturday and Sunday. Um, I am bringing some recording equipment. I'm going to try to talk to as many people as I can, maybe do some live recording, drop by. I would love to get a chance to meet you in person, grab a drink. I'll be at Atmo. Perfect. Um, yeah, I'm definitely all for super it. Super hyped. Absolutely. And I'm sad that I can't be there. <laughs> we'll have one for you. <laughs> We'll have one for you. I'll send you a goodie bag. Um, <laughs> I've already I've already got some swag set aside for you, Virus. Don't worry. Aw, um, thank you. And we'll we'll remote you in as much as possible. Thank you for coming out. I don't we know. like to do a thing we call parting shots. I think maybe kind of just already went through that. Um, we call it a parting shots, just sort of that like last last thoughts, last, last take feelings. For us? Yeah, Ooh, I got a hot take. Uh, Frontier Developments and. Uh... CIG combine forces and make Elite Dangerous Citizen 2 Electric Boogaloo. <laughs> Boom. Next biggest star thing. Star Dangerous Elite Citizen? Right. <laughs> elite Dangerous Star Citizen. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> just, just put them together, right? <laughs> just, just smash them together. Half ass it like everything wild. else. <laughs> that would be wild. Wouldn't it be wild if they took like the Python or Anaconda and put it into Star Citizen? Oh, we already have the aspects. Like, I say we go for more ships. The Nomad looks so much <laughs> like it. <laughs> uh, that would be perfect. Yep. I, It'll I, never happen, but God, I, I love Yeah, that. exactly. Do it for a uh, April I, Fool CIG. Do it. Absolutely. Uh, hey, man, I still want my Raptor. I want it to clean my hangar. Oh, yes. Give it to me. <laughs> True. <laughs> uh, well, that's our show. We are out of time today. Huge thank you to Bognagas for joining us. Bog, where can our listeners keep up with what you're doing and catch your stream? Sure, yeah. Uh, everything's pretty much on Twitch, so you can find me streaming uh, usually Tuesday through Sundays. It's going to be a little different with sitcom coming up, obviously, but it's at twitch.tv forward slash bognogus, B-O-G-N-O-G-U-S. Cool. Well, thanks for joining us on Hangar 8, and remember, fly safe out there. And when you can't, Medrunner's got your back. This has been Hangar 8, the Medrunner podcast. If you want to learn more about Medrunner, you can visit us at medrunner.space or follow us on TikTok, YouTube, X, or Instagram under MedrunnerSC. For all things Star Citizen, visit robertsspaceindustries.com. Thanks for listening, and until next time.